So you like playing the light class, but you want to get more kills. Well, let me tell you, you are in the right place. What's going on? My name is Asterix. I drop 30 kill games almost every single day. I've tied the world record a few days ago. So if that is enough to make you feel like you're in the right place to get these tips, I don't know what to tell you. The first things first, I want to go over the kit that I think is best equipped to get you high kill games. Now, I do want to say this is fluid. Some things could fit you better than they fit me, but I just want to share with you what has brought me success personally. The XP-54 is one of the greatest guns in the entire game. It's good at A. AR distance, it's good at mid range, it's great at close range, it's my favorite gun, it's what I've gotten some of my highest kill games with. The SH1, the shotgun, two tap to every single class. If you're good with movement, you are good with the shotgun, completely broken in someone who knows how to use the dash. And that brings me to my next point the dash is 100% the most broken ability aside from invisibility. Now, I don't use invisibility because it seems a little cheesy, so I can't speak to that as much, but if you look at some of my other gameplays, dash is so useful, especially when you are soloing teams. Now, as a light, the glitch grenade and the stun gun are essential. The stun gun is how you deal with heavies that have any amount of skill. If they don't, you can just move around them. But if they are any good at their class, you're going to need the stun gun. The glitch grenade is your counter for everything in the game. Without the glitch grenade, the light class is just not it. Now, the first gadget, the flashbang, that's a little bit of preference, but I use the flashbang. I think it's completely slept on. If you throw a flashbang, then a glitch grenade, you're going to go in and get an easy free kill, sometimes an easy two free kills, and then your team can come in and clean up. Now, you don't want to ignore your reserve over here. I have thermal vision, breach charge, and smoke grenade. Thermal vision and smoke grenade are one-on-one. -on -one. They go together. You can use the smoke to smoke an area where teams are really holding together. Throw on the thermal vision. You're the only one that's able to see. Now, you always want to have thermal vision in your reserve in case you're on a nighttime map. If you are on a nighttime map and do not put on your thermal vision, you are selling. Now, that's my kit that I'm running in almost every single one of my games, especially when I'm PR chasing. My PR currently, if you didn't know, is 38. But a kit can only get you so far. So here are eight tips that I've picked up that I think sharing with you will help you get to the place that I do at the end of each of my games. Now, the first thing you want to do in a game when you're trying to get the highest kills possible is push first and immediately get a feel for who is the better team. I'll push the outskirts of one team or watch two teams fight each other and it's pretty clear who the better team is. Whoever you feel is the worst team of the two, that's who you want to score first. Your objective here in these games is for all three teams to score and then you get the fourth one. Now, the point of that is to make the game go on the longest so you have the most opportunity to stack as many kills as you can. And the order you want to do that is worst team first, best team second, your third, and then obviously your team fourth as well to win it. I let the worst team score first, mostly because you can't really count on them end game to be the third. The better team, you don't really have to help as much to fill in that. And then for the last two, you're going to have to hit that comeback sweep back that's on you, that's skill level. So again, in pubs, I think it's more important to get into gunfights, get used to killing, get used to 1v3ing than it is to get the wins in pubs. In ranked, in tournaments, it's a completely different story. Now in these big kill games, it's important never to push before you get your first kill. What you want to do is feel out your surroundings, play off of objective, rooftops, always take height, and you want to get that first kill before you push. And if you can't, that means that you're probably going to die if you push 100%. Another quick tip about the kit that I was using earlier, the biggest factor of getting high kill games and controlling how the game flow is, getting all three of those teams to score before you get the final, is knowing how to control cash outs. In 90 to 100% of the matches I watch on YouTube, other people see this situation of a team that's about to score and it, it's at the last sliver of about to cash out you feel like you can't do anything and the game is over if you are running a stun as a light and a heavy casts a bubble over the cash out and you feel like you can't get in there without dying it doesn't matter if you die or not if you go in and stun the person trying to cash out that will cancel the cash out and it'll finish the way it was before this just gives you an extra level of control over how the game is going now this is my big philosophy on games especially new games if you want to get good at a new game your primary focus focus needs to be getting in as many gunfights as possible, especially ones where the odds are stacked against you. I've done this with Call of Duty, I've done this with Apex, I've done this with a variety of games to try and make myself grow in skill on a limited time frame. A little something about myself, I'm a dad, I have a full-time job, I don't have a whole lot of time to just pour hours in to try and get better at games. So in order to do that quickly, I force myself into gunfights faster or into more gunfights than the average player would in a normal span of time. And I think that's exactly what pubs are for. In ranked and tournament, you should not go for kill counts. Unless you're trying to break a world record or trying to make content, I think you shouldn't go for kill counts in, in ranked or tournaments. But pubs are for getting into gunfights, learning the rules of the game, and progressing in your skill level. And what better way to do that than to get into as many gunfights as possible? And that's where we're PR chasing. If you're hitting consistently 20 to 30 
kills, then that means you're ready to go into a ranked team and contribute, especially at a light that is outside of the meta. I just wanted to give this quick guide to anyone who's watching my gameplays, wondering how many kills I'm getting or how I'm getting to that point. This is how I did that. Keep in mind, everything in my kit all has a purpose. You can take that into ranked or tournaments and it'll play the same, but please do not PR chase in ranked or tournaments. Do it in pubs until you hit a consistent 20 to 30 kills. Then you know you're on a level where you can really compete for that highest rank and ranked, and that's how those three different modes should be incorporated into your own gameplay. I also want to throw in here really quick how I have all my buttons mapped. I use the new Scuff and Vision controller with the software that lets me map anything to any button on the controller. This is how I have that map. Hopefully that helped. If it did, drop a like and a sub, please. If you want to see more content, more 30 kill gameplays, less than 10 deaths, I'll be posting one of those every single day with guides here and there like this one. If it did help you, let me know in the comments and let me know when you see from here on out.